Take a tiny piece of leaf green Fimo and mix it well with at least a half block of Fimo translucent. Your ratio might be around 40 to 1. You might want to change the shade slightly by adding a little yellow or some of the other green which is brighter. You'll need to condition this clay until it's relatively soft and form it into a Toblerone shape. I really don't know what this shape's called, it's sort of a triangular prism, Tri triangular extrusion. That was an air bubble I've just got rid of there. Cut this triangular shape in half, down the length of it. Then separate the two halves. Using a cocktail stick or a kebab stick, make a valley in each half towards the point. These should line up later, so try and make them the same point on each one. In this valley we'll put a small purple cylinder. You'll need to mix the purple to be good and dark using navy blue and red and a little black. Like Seaside Rock, we want to see a spot at the end, so we need to put a cylinder through the shape. The size of cylinder that you use affects the size of spot that you'll see. I'm just softening it a little bit. Fit the cylinder into the groove. And close it back up carefully to avoid getting an air bubble between the pieces. Then you can cut off the excess of this purple bit. Just preparing this to lengthen it. Banging down can help to force any air out. To lengthen this shape in polymer clay, you need to use your fingers to nip and pinch the ends and press down as you do to keep that triangle shape. It takes some practice. You can turn it over and do it to each edge and stretch it at this stage. You're sort of forcing the whole of the clay to move together, including the spot in the middle. Don't go too far, because we will need to put white on one side. That's about 14 inches long, I'd guess. The white piece you need to roll quite thinly. And that needs to be added to one side of each of your triangles. Cut round it to keep it tidy. Try and stick it down properly.
You may need to reposition these parts to ensure that it sticks together all the way along with no air bubbles in between the colours. Air bubbles in a cane, especially a complex cane, will cause all sorts of problems later as the clay separates. It distorts it. All the molecules need to stick together and drag each other along with them as you stretch the shape. Then you need to stick the two triangles together, green, white, green, white. nice and firmly and then cut in half and put these two pieces together again make sure you keep that green white pattern so now you have something which does resemble a quarter of a kiwi fruit there you go You need to cut this piece into four so that you have four quarters obviously. Those four quarters will go together to form a full circle with a gap in the middle. Line them up carefully. That's one half. and the other. Trying to make sure that they will form two halves of a circle. Just before fully attaching the suit two halves you'll need to put the lighter green colour in the middle. This is a mix of translucent and white with a little bit of green. If you have doll porcelain Fimo this is ideal to add the green to but be aware that the softness is slightly different so you need to condition it well to make it move as easily as the outside bit. Take a bit of time about fitting the two halves together because you do need all those spots to line up fa fairly accurately. Any mistakes will, believe me, show up in the miniature version. This part will be familiar to those of you who already have my book, Making Miniature Food. It appears on the Oranges Project as picture 10. It's also the source of one of the most common mistakes. Squeeze the middle properly before any attempt to roll the cylinder. Get your fingers right into the middle, forming the shape a bit like a capstan or an apple core. In other words, give it a waistline. That helps to stick the whole thing together and to remove any residual air that might be stuck between the pieces. You can use your fingers quite firmly and then work outwards towards the ends. This helps to ensure you get a nice long piece that's usable. You'll always waste a bit at the ends, but that doesn't need to be very much. And don't worry if a little bulge appears at the end. This is quite normal and certainly lot, a lot better than a deep indentation, which could mean that there's air in the middle or that the centre bit wasn't conditioned enough. You can start to roll, but be very careful to make sure that everything's really well stuck together. You can roll a little. I'm just feeling to see if there's any air gaps in there, because usually you can feel them when you're experienced. But that one seems to be fine. Roll it. And you can even bang your work on the bench a little bit to, to make sure that everything's sticking together properly. It does help it to stretch properly. It can be quite therapeutic as well and is a technique that comes in useful when you're making the strawberry cane later. 
Cut into manageable pieces that you can work with as well. You can keep a bit aside to make kiwis with their skins on. This bit we're making the right size to use for kiwi slices in puddings and jellies etc. Roll it down to the size that you want. Obviously you can make it to any scale you like, but smaller than 12th scale you might need a magnifier to see the detail. I'm just about at the, scale, the size that I want. If you're in any doubt about 12th scale, just put 12 slices side by side and see if they're the right size, they make up the right size for something real life. Then you need to squeeze all the way along this little tube to make it more oval. Then you can set it according to the instructions on your clay packet in your oven. I usually do set these canes first before I slice them. Then you can make anything you want with them. To make the skin you need a brown mix. I suggest two parts terracotta, one part orange and one part leaf green. Roll it out quite thinly. Use one of the larger pieces that you've set aside. And wrap the skin round it. It does need to be quite thin. You need to make sure that you join the edges together perfectly. You don't want any overlaps otherwise the, there are areas of thicker skin and that does show up. So if you cut one piece off, fold the second piece over and stroke it down and then you can usually see where the line of the first one falls and score along that. There you see, it's much easier then to join them up. Pat them down carefully and give it a little roll. Uh, you might find some air bubbles, I can see one there. You just need to nick that and squash the air out of it. Again roll it down to the scale that you want. There's another little bit of air there. Right, I'll start with a nice sharp end. And to close these ends, you alternately tweak and pat the ends over the central colour. If you have difficulty doing this, you'll find further instructions on my Oranges project, which is in my book or available free on my website. You can then cut that piece off as if you're making half a larger kiwi fruit and then tweak the other end. Just persuade it to join over the inside. That'll leave you with a tiny kiwi fruit that you can then roll in the texture. To make the texture you can either use some ground down part baked femo which is what I'm using here or you can use some trimmings from brown velvet or scenic scatter.